Hey guys, how are you doing today? We are back after COVID and my laptop was going damn slow. So I'm trying to replace the hard disk with an uh, M2 SSD as well as 2.5 SSD. So we start this process by moving the back panel. And unlike last time, I'm trying to keep this video to around 12 minutes or so. So what you see is the complete uh, back panel removed. That's the 2.5 SSD and that's the slot for the M2 SSD, right? Now, before we start with anything, the part to remove uh, is the battery because you don't want to charge up things by mistake. So the easiest way is to just remove the plug connector by using the tip of your fingernails. Again, be gentle, do not be strong holding things, I guess. So this is kind of like a flimsy laptop, but when handled gently, it's good to go. Now, after you remove it and uh, keep it aside, you can start with the next step. The next step is to, one, we are not going to touch that M2 SATA. We are going to start with the 2.5 hardest. So there are four screws. But before we go there, we need to remove the existing hard disk cable. Very important. Don't damage it. We need it afterwards. Now, there are four screws. One, two, three, and the fourth one. So we just remove all those four screws and keep them safely. Do not lose them. It's hard to replace them. Once done, remove that hard disk gently. And once you wiggle it out, that's it. Now, this is a Toshiba hard disk that came uh, with the laptop originally. It's a 1 TB hard disk. And you keep that aside safely. And we just go move the laptop aside because we need to remove the frame cover. So, before we do that, on the top, there's a black connector attached to the cable. You need to gently tug that flat plastic bit away from the hard disk. Just pull it gently and it should come out with a click. Keep that connector safely. And this is the hard disk. Now, while it is slow, it's not gone bad completely. So there are ways to use this as an external SSD hard disk. Uh, if you want me to take a video on that, uh, let me know. But over here, you can see that I'm removing the frame cover from that hard disk by removing four screws. Once done, the hard disk should gently slide down with the frame cover separator. Be careful to do not bend that frame cover and you can keep that old hard disk aside. Now, now comes the moment. Uh, I have got the Samsung E70 Evo 2.5 uh, factor SSD. Ensure that you buy the one without the NVMe technology. Dell Inspiron 7559 series do not support that tech. And ensure it is SATA. So that's the port and if you want this exact model, I have given a link in the description for that. Now what we need to do is attach the frame to the hard disk. Uh, we do that by doing the steps in reverse. Now be ensure to keep the frame right side up. There's an arrow mark for your guidance. And then keep that a hard disk uh, so that the logo is on the top side and attach all the four screws. Uh, while tightening the screws, be firm but do not over tighten them or damage it. Right? You want the frame to hold the hard disk in place, not break it. Once that is done, we need to My bad. 
So that's the M2 SATA hard disk from Kingston, uh, roughly about 480 GB. It's a bit of an old model, but uh, heavy duty gray. So we will fit that very soon. Now sliding the laptop back into view. We will be fitting the 2.5 SSD first. So basically, oh, before we do that, we need to attach the connector back to the new hard disk. Again, align the ports and then gently push it in. It should go in with a click. That's pretty much it, right? Do not break it, be gentle. Once that is done, we push it in the hard disk back into the port lining the screw holes. We attach the hard disk connector cable to the board, again gently by just using your fingertips. Tuck away the cable and then tighten all the four screws back. Now again firmly tighten this because you don't want the hard disk to move around. And again I'm referring to the SSD as hard disk. Uh, it's just years of uh, naming that I follow, but it's an SSD, don't get confused. And once that is done, we move to the M2 SATA SSD. Now basically, we, we I already have a screw in place, uh, just remove it and keep it safely. Uh, in case if your laptop doesn't have this, either take a screw from a different part, like or use an old laptop screw. I'm not sure of the name of the screw, but uh, if you don't have it, all the rest. But if you do, just keep it aside separately and safely. Take in the M2 SATA SSD. Now, if you're confused about this gap in the top, whether it is two gaps or one gap, don't worry. It's a BM cross compatible SSD, uh, almost all the SSDs that you have getting now for this old generation laptop are cross compatible. So again, the link to this product is in the description if you want to buy the same. Now it's just like you need to fit it on a slightly slanting angle, just like how you do the uh, RAM. Slide it in gently and then screw that uh, holder back in. It's a single screw, again firmly but gently. Okay. Once that is done, uh, you're done with the fitment of all the hard disk. You can connect that laptop battery cable again. If you like to see the videos on the RAM change as well as the battery change, I'm attaching the links over here. So once that is done, once all these parts are changed, your laptop is almost as good as new and uh, you will definitely notice a significant performance improvement. And also, before I forget, while you're at it, ensure to tighten those two hinge screws. Usually these get loosened, so whenever you open the back laptop, back panel, just tighten them back. If they are loose, your hinges will break or it will have a creaking noise. Once that is tightened uh, and do a visual check, you're good to go. Now you can tighten the back panel. So first you slide that into position gently and then you tighten the single screw at the back. Now with this, hopefully uh, your hard disk work is done. Uh, I would suggest uh, to go with a fresh installation of a Windows 10 uh, OS onto your new hard disk. Now let's boot up the laptop. Uh, the first boot up usually takes a few seconds longer, but after that it's very fast. So the way I set up my hard disk is, uh, the Kingston SSD is going to be my Windows OS and the software uh, drive. Uh, I don't mind replacing it because it's a little bit cheaper. 
The Samsung SSD is the long term storage, so I'm going to keep my sensitive files, personal files, and work files over there. And having this two drive setup is very efficient when it comes to gaming, video editing, or uh, anything that deems or requires uh, high access rates. And of course, you can use the disk management tool in Windows to format it as you would like to. A point note here is Samsung drives come up with this software called the Samsung Magician, which you can download for free from the their website. This is kind of like a drive management website, and although it recognizes Kingston Drive, most of the features don't uh, work for here. Now, I majorly use this to benchmark my drive out of excitement. Uh, it was pretty good, uh, close to 400 or 500 MBBS speeds. Uh, but the major part is the performance. Right? And of course, there's diagnostic, but hopefully we shouldn't need that. If you go to performance optimization, I'll turn it to the max, where I have enabled trim, rapid reading, and over provisioning. Trim and rapid reading, please do activate it to utilize the full performance of your hard disk. Over provisioning gives you a longer lifespan of hard disk at the cost of a small storage space. But we are talking about TBs here. It's okay to sacrifice 10% for a longer life of a hard disk. Now with that, I think we have covered everything. It's a little over 12 minutes, but I believe uh, this is a wonderful and a helpful video for you. Uh, if you like this video, do let me know through the comments and give me a like on this video and subscribe to my channel. And of course, uh, share this video to others as well. Goodbye and have a great day. Ciao.